Hello and welcome to the program. Thank you so much for tuning in today to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Our guest is Dr. Andrew Blavelt. He's here today to talk with us from the Oregon Medical Research Center about a recently FDA approved medication by Janssen uh, to treat plaque psoriasis. Welcome to the program today, Dr. Blavelt. Thank you. I'm happy to be here today. Uh, give us a bit of background about yourself. Well, first of all, I'm a dermatologist. I've um, been a dermatologist now for about 25 years. And uh, next thing that's uh, relevant for today is that I've uh, been studying and researching psoriasis for many years now, and um, both from a laboratory point of view and from a clinical studies point of view, um, testing new medications in psoriasis. So it's a, an area of uh, research and, and a disease that I'm very familiar with and uh, um, I'm passionate about to try to try to get all my patients to uh, to clear skin without side effects and it's a important um, important goal for me for my patients with psoriasis now just like many other diseases have more than one type is psoriasis a, a disease like that as well having different levels or different types of uh, severity uh, it is. It 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 um, has a wide variety of manifestations. Um, most patients have what's called plaque psoriasis, and I'd say it's about 95% of them. And what that is is um, typical appearing um, skin lesions that are um, well uh, marginated from normal skin. They have a sharp border, common on the scalp, common on the elbows, the knees. The lesions are raised, they're red, they're scaly. Um, there are other forms of psoriasis, um, guttate psoriasis, erythrodermic psoriasis. But for the for all the studies that are done for new medications, um, we study the most common form. And then patients who have the common form, they can either have a little bit, maybe in just one area of the body, or they can have it all over their body. They can have it covering the entire surface of their body. So we have a big range of severity. And for medications where we treat internally, um, those are those are going to be patients that have more uh, moderate to severe, medium to severe disease and really require an, an internal solution to their psoriasis as opposed to patients with more limited lesions that may have just a few. And with those types of patients, we'll be treating with more topical therapies, such as creams and ointments. Are the causes of psoriasis as varied as the uh, manifestations? Um, so we know it's a genetic disease, mm -hmm. um, and that's the first thing I tell all my patients. Um, however, it's not a simple genetic disease, so a lot of patients will not have a family history, even though it is a genetic disease. Um, some, some will have family history, and usually patients that have a family history um, will get to the, get psoriasis at an earlier age, um, usually in their teens, 20s, or 30s, and those without a family history will get it later in life, usually in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. So genes are important, and then we have the environmental influences of psoriasis, which I don't really call the the causes of psoriasis, but it's things that can make it worse, um, such as infections, um, alcohol in excess, smoking, uh, cold weather, uh, emotional stress um, can all can all kind of make psoriasis come out worse, um, be, make it harder to treat. We're going to talk about some recently approved, I think just uh, well, maybe a couple of weeks ago or earlier this month, uh, FDA approval of a new drug to treat plaque psoriasis uh, offered by Janssen Biotech. What is this new drug and why is it different from any of the other treatments that we've uh, seen in the past? Yeah, before I um, answer that specifically, I just wanted to give a quick overview of what's happened with psoriasis treatments for more severe disease. Right. So um, in the 20th century, we had far less effective and far more uh, unsafe drugs than what we have now. So the options included methotrexate, which was an old chemotherapy drug. We had cyclosporin, which is a, a broad immunosuppressive drug. And we had phototherapy or light box therapy. 
um, which is very inconvenient for patients to, to get into light boxes several times a week. So what we've seen in the last 15 years or so is the advent of biologic therapy for psoriasis. And what I mean by that is um, drugs that are given by injection, by shots just under the skin. And these drugs are much more targeted to psoriasis, and they really have revolutionized treatment of more severe psoriasis. Um, some of them are given once a week, and then some of them are only given once every three months, um, so making them very convenient um, for patients as well. Are they what we've seen with bi- yeah, I, I was going to say, well, what we've seen with biologics is an improvement within them as well over the last 15 years. So our first attempts at giving medicines in this manner um, were frankly not quite as good as what we have in the, la- in the last five years or so, um, where we have drugs that are really targeted to the skin, very convenient and, and very safe. What about the, the cost effectiveness of uh, this new drug? Is it comparable to, say, Humira or any of the other drugs that are on the market? Um, so it's a good question. Um, so one of the drawbacks of these newer kinds of medications for psoriasis is that they are very expensive, and um, I think it's due to you know their, the the difficulty in making them, the difficulty in getting them to to uh, to come to approval. It takes many years for them to get to approval. Um, they're not simple to make. Um, this 21st century designer medicines. Um, and it is true that the older medications, such as Enbrel and Humira, um, are are cheaper than the newer biologics. However, they are still expensive, so compared to conventional drugs. So Enbrel, Humira, definitely cheaper, but still expensive. Um, we do see new drugs like Trimphia, um coming in with, with high price tags. And, um, that's one of the... One of the downsides of the drug is the cost and access to them. Now, as far as more details about this new drug, it's probably, um, it, I, I consider it reaching the, the pinnacle of what we're looking for in an ideal drug for psoriasis in that it's highly effective. About 9 out of 10 patients uh, do well with trim file, which is a very high effectiveness rate. The safety so far for up to one year of use has been um, very safe. There has been no major concerns with safety issues. So very safe, very effective, and it's also very convenient. So it's only given every two months, so six shots per year. So it's really hitting on all the things that we're looking for in a good medicine for psoriasis. Again, Though the access cost of it, you know, would be something that um, that that could be an issue with this new drug. All drugs have some type of side effect. You know, maybe you take it with a with an orange or something, and it alleviates those side effects. But what are some of the the side effects that we should look for when considering uh, this new drug? So um, there's several things that are important when considering side effects of drugs, and so. I just want to give a little background on that first before answering the question. And one is when we do trials, the drug is always compared to placebo um, given to patients or fake shots. And we look at the rate of things occurring, um, such as colds or infections or even bad things like cancer or heart attacks. Mm-hmm. We look for the rate of those things in the placebo group and compare them to the rate in the um, the drug treated patients and what and if we see a similar rate then most physicians would conclude that the drug is not causing side effects or at least not causing significant problems that are over and above what one would see with someone receiving water shots so given that caveat um, what's listed under Tremphia is, um, is uh, common cold, um, I think headaches, um, and um, some, some minor skin infections. Now, 
What's important, though, is that all of those things occurred in a similar level in the placebo group. So, so there are side effects listed, but um, in my view, they're 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 not much different um, mm-hmm. as far as the rate of those things compared to the group that was not receiving drug. So that's pretty remarkable, that's and cool. I think it's the case because the drug is actually um, targeting the skin. So we have it really working within the skin, and so we would not expect things to occur internally um, that are bad for patients. What is the most important thing that you'd like to tell those considering using Trimphia to understand? What's the most important piece of information that you'd like to convey today here? Um, the most important thing that I'd like to say is that psoriasis is a health condition that requires treatment. We know that untreated psoriasis is not a healthy thing for patients to have, and it's associated with internal problems and internal inflammation. So if you're out there um, not wanting to use drugs because you're afraid of them and because you're worried about side effects, um, what I would say is you need to be more worried about your psoriasis and the bad effects of psoriasis. Um, and so untreated psoriasis is not a good thing. And then and the other major point is that the new drugs now, and really the new drugs in the last five years or so, um, offer such a high degree of effectiveness compared to any kind of risk that it makes it well worth your while to try one of those new medicines. Well, I appreciate uh, your information and insights, doctor. Uh, I'm hoping you will uh, we'll get together and have some more conversations. All right. Thank you for having me today. Dr. Andrew Blaveld hills from Portland, Oregon, and is president and investigator at Oregon Medical Research Center. And we've been talking about the first and only biologic that selectively blocks IL-23. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes. Be sure and visit our affiliates page when you visit our platform at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au.